the dusty area. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Deputy President. Um, I rise to take note of the answers given to questions without notice by Senator Brandis. Mr. Deputy President, I rise in response to ask the question that everyone is asking, and that is why. Why now, days from a by-election that could alter the government's capacity to pass legislation? Why now, weeks away from a budget that has been sincerely promising since September to make deep and lasting cuts to our social services, to put a blunt axe into foreign aid, to slice the budgets of our public broadcasters and to undermine the assistance that we extend to pensioners, single parents and low-income earners? Why does the senator think now is the time for Australians to be considering the degree of bloviating racism permissible in our public discourse? Why is this the pressing issue of our time? Why, when we have tried so hard to earn a reputation as a country that welcomes people of all races, why does the first law officer of the Crown think that among all the issues requiring urgent attention, that the right to offend, to insult and to humiliate someone is a right worth rising up to defend? Why has the Attorney General, under heavy heart and careful consideration, determined that all the pressing matters of all the legislation weighing so heavily on the Minister's mind, of all the freedoms to protect and cherish, why does the freedom to humiliate someone based on the colour of their skin warrant this? Mr Acting Deputy President, I would like to assert that, quite frankly, the reason this matter has come to the floor of this chamber is not because of the careful consideration of the Attorney General. It is not because it meets the strategic objectives of the government's legislative agenda. And it is not because the Racial Discrimination Act in its current form is so outrageously unjust. Of course not. Mr. Acting, Mr. Deputy President, this is a matter of urgency is simply due the astonishing conceit, the breathtaking, breathtaking arrogance and the unbridled contempt that was so evident in Senator Brandis's response in this chamber on Monday. It is not just what the senator from Queensland said, but the way he said it, that has elevated this issue to a matter of pressing public concern. Senator Brandis's response to Senator Perris's question was delivered in a manner that made no effect, no effort to disguise his contempt and his disdain for either the question or the questioner. Ladies and gentlemen, we were all here to witness it, but for the handsad record, I will repeat the minister's words. People have a right to be bigots, you know. And for the handsad record, I want to be clear, to use the two other words Senator Brandis proposes omitting from the Act. His response was delivered in a manner that was both offensive and it was insulting. Whether it was a sound bite or a headline, Senator Brandis's response was reprehensible, cringeworthy and ultimately untenable. He left himself with no choice but to try and undo the self-inflicted damage. So I ask again, why is the right to humiliate someone because of their race a matter of such urgency? The senator can continue to pre pretend that this is an issue solely about free speech. But Mr Deputy President, it's not. It's more than that. It goes to the heart of this country. It goes to the heart of a multicultural nation. And frankly, the responses that have been given by Senator Brandis are both offensive and insulting in themselves. The unmasked contempt in his response to Senator Perris was simply astonishing. Senator Brandis isn't simply defending the rights of the likes of Andrew Bolt, no. He's gone beyond that now. Senator Brandis, through his contempt, has been forced to use this issue to defend himself.
Thank you, Senator Dastiari. Senator Boyce, on the thank, same matter. Thank you. On the same matter, Mr.